All right, here we are today at Titan Machine Tool, back at it making chips. Step two in the process here of making these turnbuckles. We're gonna cut the three quarter 10 right hand acne thread today. Here's the thread, I've done, done a few already. Finished turned them. 750 diameter, 748, give it take a little. Then we cut the thread, three quarter ten. It's about five and a half inches long. This is what we're using for an insert right here. Seco, 16 ER, 10 Acme. We got it over here in the lathe, in that tool holder right there. I think that's a Vardex tool holder. I don't know, it could be Vardex, Vargas, Snap, Tap, Seco. Could be any of them. But that's what we're doing it with. 4140HT. We got them supported on the end with the center to reduce deflection. We got the spray mist. We're running at 340 RPMs. Program is queued up, ready to go. So I have three cycles of threading that I run. Take 20 passes, rough it all in, leaving four thousandths. Take two thousandths, clean it all up. Take two more thousandths, finish pass. Now there's a whole bunch of spring passes that are included in there. The tool deflects a little bit the part pushes, so we just keep going over it a few times. I noticed that the light cuts, when you take the light cuts, it actually creates a much nicer shape to the thread, because pretty much you're generating the shape of the thread with the form of the insert right there. So as it starts cutting deeper, it takes heavier passes takes more material, more surface area of the insert is in contact. So it's, it makes for a heavier cut. So I like the pussyfoot. So all that talking basically says I pussyfoot, I try to pussyfoot with it. It's been making a nice clean thread. So that's what we're doing. And our inspection gauge, right here, nut, freshly made nut. That's our inspection gauge. So let's turn the spindle on. Turn the spray mist on. Program's all queued up to go. We're gonna track for our approach. Quarter track lets you do that. You got a functions up here. I'll hit stop, stop. Right over there, you got track, you got CNC run. You hit CNC run, you hit go, it just does what it does, okay? If you use track, it acts more like a single block on a CNC, you get more of a single block type action with that. So you can reduce your rapid feed, watch your distance to go. That's what the track essentially allows you to do. So we'll come back over, we'll hit track, and then we crank the handle here. This is the handle. When we crank the handle, it moves. So we can crank that handle and creep up on it to make sure it's looking like where it needs to be. You know, on a CNC, you look up, distance to go, my distance to go, 100,000, so I look pretty safe. I'm safe, okay? But once the threading cycle begins, the track feature doesn't work. You can't stop in the middle of the thread. You're committed. Once it picks up the lead with the encoder on the spindle, it goes. So, it's always best to make sure you know what it's gonna do before you send it in. So here we go. I'm tracking, I'm tracking, I'm tracking. Oh, that's it, the encoder kicked in, picked up the thread. Now it's gonna run. It's gonna be like the single block. Gets to the end of that, boom, stops. Now you'd hit your cycle stop, it would move again and it would go on a CNC or on a prototrack. So I know everything's good. I've done a bunch of them, no crashes. We'll come back over here on the control we're gonna hit stop, we're gonna hit CNC run, and then we come back, we hit go. Now that baby's gonna run.
whatever pitch thread you're cutting on an Acme thread, you need the proper insert for it. It's not like a regular 60 degree thread where you can just go and cut any pitch you want with that 60 degree thread. Acme threads, when using an insert like this, oh look at that, look at that beautiful chip, looks like a slinky. So I'm cutting a 10 pitch, so this insert is made to cut a 10 pitch. You want to cut a 12 pitch, you need an insert to cut a 12 pitch, etc, etc. Oh, look at that chip, that was beautiful. So the spray mist keeps things cool. Oh, you hear that? Sounds a little different. The surface area of that insert is taking a heavier bite. So now to help that along, we're gonna add oil here. Everything works better with lubrication. So the insert will like that better. It'll help it. artwork. So the oil makes well, lubricity. Lubricity. And the spray keeps things from getting hot. Look at those chips. So this thing takes 20 passes. 20, I say, that's right. I tried to do it in 10, I actually pushed the pot into the chuck. Got a little too aggressive with the tool there. It's running 425 RPMs, 10 passes. Literally pushed the pot into the chuck. I got the center out here, the center is spinning. And I was watching it cut, and all of a sudden the center stopped spinning. So I know the material creeped into the chuck. So that one was no good. We lost the lead on the thread, that one was no good. So we're going easy now, baby steps. Little itty bitty passes, safer. So we'll let this thing do its 20 passes and it might take two or three spring passes. Put some more oil on there. Two or three spring passes. And then it, when it stops, it, it backs out and then I gotta go in with the file. And I flat file the top of the threads to take the burrs off. I'm not going to do it though with one hand, we're going to just pretend. We get pretty close to that center, I do say, but pretty close. We had to make sure when we set it up we didn't have no crash bank boom. I want to do a digger on the center. It gets pretty close. We're taking the spring passes now because the chips are very small.
It's already 10 minutes long, this video. Alright, so that was that. Those were the 20 passes and the two or three spring passes. We'll turn off this spray mist here. Get it out of the way. So now I would flat file this. I would take my file, I'd flat file, okay? The number one rule on the lathe, what's the number one rule on the lathe? You never, 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 never use a file that does not have a handle. That on the lathe. Do not do it. You gotta have a, a handle like this, or a handle like this, but do not try to use this thing with no handle. Potential catastrophe. So let's pretend I flat filed it, I deburr it, I run it again, put some more oil on there a couple times. All right, here we go, go again. This is probably completely unnecessary, the way I'm doing it. Could have probably ran it all in one cycle, but I was having problems. I ran a few of them before I threw an actual piece in there. And they were coming out looking not so good. And I noticed if I take a bunch of spring passes and really pussyfoot, the threads just come out so much cleaner. I know time is money, but scrapping pots costs, cost you too. Breaking tools cost you as well. So all the information required to cut this thread is in one event on the Prototrack programming. We'll take a look at it when I'm done. There again, I deburr it again. Can't do it, I'm holding the phone. Deburr it again and then run in, take 2000s, 2000s again. This would be the final pass. This first, this first recut cuts nothing. Now it takes the 2000s. Then it takes a spring cut. Two or three spring cuts. It's like grinding. When you surface grind, you take your finished pass, you spark out, you just let the thing keep going over the part until there's no more sparks back and forth back and forth over and over again until all the sparks are gone it's kind of what I'm doing here this deflection deflection in the tool deflection in the piece this way all the deflection goes away and I find that the thread like I said looks Nice and clean, or at least the best I'm gonna get it. So now I would ordinarily deburr that and then check it with my nut, my thread gauge. I've already done four or five of them, so I know this is all good. It's been repeating, the process is in control. But let's take a run over to the comparator. Uh, I'm gonna take a run on over to the comparator over here. And we'll take a look at what the thread looks like under magnification here. All right, so that's the shape of the thread. 
Looks pretty nice. The uniform. So what I check here is I check the uh, minor diameter of the thread. I don't know if you can see with that unbelievably bright reflection off the glass. Let's see if we can get it from over here. Okay, so what I'll do is, is I'll bring this up to the line. See this line right there? On there, there's a line right there. I'll bring that down till the minor diameter of my thread makes contact with the line. Now this is all by eye. So if your eyes are terrible like mine, it may not repeat exactly to the exact amount, but that looks good right there. I'll come over to my my scale, I'll turn my scale on here. I'll zero that zero that out so we're zeroed out here. Alright, so we're looking for a minor diameter of like 630. So now that I know I'm at zero on the line I'll move this down to the other side and we'll go to the, to the, to the oh, we can see this one pretty good and I'll bring that up until it looks like it is just right where it needs to be like I said this is all by eyeball if you did this you may get a slightly different reading than me thickness of the the line etched on the glass is probably a thousandth so I mean you're not gonna get much closer than a thousandth or two when you're doing it like this all right so let's see what I got for a number I'm looking for 630 what do I got 632 okay so I could check it again might be 631 might be 633 I'm looking for 630 I'd say that's pretty good like I said, if I rechecked it again, I might be plus or minus one or two. But either way, that's how I inspect it. I'm more interested in seeing what the thread profile looks like to make sure that it is uniform and clean looking. So there's your Acme thread. You can get all your information for it in your machinery's handbook here. We got the machinery's handbook. This is an older one, but... You can get all your information on your Acme threads. It's all about, tells you what it's all about. Gives you all the information, more information than you need. All the formulas are in here. And then we go to the other page and it actually shows you for the pitch you're cutting, your thread height, all the information for each pitch. And down here whether you're doing external threads or internal threads. That's all the information you need when you go to cut that Acme thread. But anyways, here we are, Titan Machine Tool in the inspection department on the Suburban Tool Master View Comparator, looking at these three quarter 10 Acme threads. So I say it's good. The nut screws on, the nut says it's good. We're gonna go with that. Signing out 19 minutes into the video here at Titan Machine Tool. Adios.